Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Fantasy News. I am your disheveled goblin host, Daniel Green, and we have some, some interesting news to get into today. I forgot to do these buttons, so I'm just going to do them right now. Starting with Wheel of Time news, and then transitioning into the wider, hardcore fantasy news, and finishing off with a good bit of D&D &D and video game fantasy news. So, buckle up, strap in, and... Let's get comfortable as we explore the fantasy genre of the day. I don't know, okay, let's just jump into it. Kicking off fantasy news today, we're going to go ahead and dive into this Wheel of Time news, starting with a set photo released from the Wheel of Time on Prime Twitter account, with the caption, A throwback to day one on the Wad on Prime set. Can you tell where we were? Yes, we can, because we're mega nerds, and this is quite obviously Emmons Field with the chimneys in the town square. So if you'd like your first look at Emmons Field for the upcoming Wheel of Time show, it has officially been posted, and I think it looks pretty damn good. The fog is clearly kind of just left over from early morning setups. I would kind of make the assumption here, this is pre-shooting, they're just getting everything ready. It seems very early in the morning. People often work extremely early hours to get things set up and ready so they can film for as long as they possibly can in the day. I think that would explain the mist still existing. So that's my speculation right there. I like it quite a bit. Am I wrong? Let me know in the comments down below if you disagree with my assertion that this is Emmons Field, despite the chimneys in Town Square. Moving on, next bit of Wheel of Time news. Jordan Con, the actual convention around the Wheel of Time, has released its shirt for this year. And I'm basically bringing up this story to announce that, yes, indeed, I will be there. If you happen to be the Atlanta area, a Wheel of Time and or Cosmere fan, because I believe Brandon Sanderson will be there this year as well. Be sure to swing by Jordan Con. It's definitely worth the trip. It'll be April 17th through the 19th, and I can definitively say it's the best convention I have ever been to, by far hands down. Not only is food provided for all meals, which is extraordinary, but the people are just so genuinely welcoming and passionate about these series they're talking about. It's not just Wheel of Time. There's quite a bit of Cosmere and other just general fantasy talk as well. In fact, I met people there who had never read Wheel of Time all the way through. That were just big fans of the convention. So I highly recommend you show up and I look forward to meeting a bunch of you there as soon as we arrive. It's gonna be a blast. I look forward to it. But now let's transition into the wider hardcore fantasy news, starting with an announcement from one of the fantasy mega stars of this generation, N.K. Jimson. Orbit Books put out a tweet about her up coming fantasy release, The City We Became. The premise around this seems to be if different boroughs from New York became personified. A fascinating idea from one of the most creative minds the fantasy genre has right now. I'm extraordinarily excited to pick this one up and actually just get through more of N.K. Jemsen's backlog this year. I am shamefully behind on her works and I hope to catch up pretty soon. I did love the first book in the Broken Earth series I read from her. It was pretty damn fantastic. Links, of course, everything for I talk about here today in the description down below. And while you're down there, if you wouldn't mind leaving a like, I'd really appreciate it. I have to say these things, it's YouTube and this sustains me. Moving on, next news. We had a cover release for the follow-up for the Twisted Ones, The Hollow Places by T. King Fisher. An interesting looking cover, if I do say so myself. I kind of like these twisted horror vibes he's going for. So if you're interested in horror books, this one is coming from you hot from the from the tour furnaces. I'm gonna stop that now. I'm, I'm overdoing the newscaster thing today. Let's let's reel it back a little bit. And I'm actually really excited about this next one too. Neil Gaiman's The Sandman adaptation over at Netflix will begin filming this May. Extraordinarily excited for that, even though I have not read this series yet. No, 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 no. He doesn't have any excuses. Ignore everything he's saying right now. Shame, shame, shame. That's a bad Daniel. Read more Gaiman. This is after years and years of failed attempts to get this series adapted, and it's now in the Netflix grindhouse. I'm really hoping this is one of those attempts that Netflix really puts all the time and effort into, and not just another example of Netflix doing the let's throw it all at the wall and see what sticks, like we've seen so often from them. This, though, if they're going to put high effort into something, I would assume Sandman by Neil freaking Gaiman would be one Shame! Of them. And in an additional Netflix adaptation piece of news here, their animated series for Altered Carbon had its first kind of actual release images put out for the fans and the reactions have been mixed because it's very stylized and these look like some intense stills but it's definitely falling into that cheaper feeling 3d animation netflix seems to rely on the live action altered carbon is pretty well liked by its fans there's not a whole lot of complaints i see about it online it didn't necessarily hook me but i'm interested in seeing netflix's now one two punch of live action and animated they seem to have a pattern of doing at least two instances we know of recently with Altered Carbon and now the Witcher animation, which is coming down their pipes. So, hey, interesting strategy, Netflix. I think we're all kind of going, hmm? 
for this one. Now let's just jump over into the HBO camp for a second here, shall we? Because they released a trailer for a concept I had a lot of mixed feelings about. I saw the title Be Foreigners and kind of went, okay, what's this? And after looking into it, it seems the premise is people from the past are being randomly teleported to the present and then have to adapt and adjust to modern society. And that's interesting, and it had my curiosity like a 4 out of 10. I wasn't super psyched, I was just like, ah, maybe I'll give the pilot a try. But after seeing the trailer, I'm definitely going to give the pilot a try, because this actually seems really interesting, and I forgot that HBO never does the, eh, just throw it out there and see what happens strategy. They usually go all out, and this looks like one heck of a going all out. It is in foreign language, so if you struggle with subtitles, sorry about that. If you don't speak English, there's a lot of people who watch my channel who don't, so if you speak, you know what I mean. I don't mean to be like, shut up. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I'm actually pretty hooked. It seems like a really good execution of this premise for a sci-fi fantasy type experience. I'm not exactly sure where this falls yet, but I'm, I'm definitely, definitely hooked. Definitely curious. They got me Got me by the jaw there. And in the final bit of HBO trailer news we're talking about here today, we got our season three trailer for Westworld season three. I will not be posting anything in terms of images or anything except for just this one that gives no spoilers because I do not want to spoil one of the best modern sci-fi shows out there for anybody. So if you haven't checked out Westworld, by God do it. And this season three definitely looks like a serious escalation from where we've been before. I'm pumped. Now let's talk about some D&D &D Avengers news. No, it's not an Avengers D&D &D being released from Marvel. Instead, it was Tom Holland, who in a pretty candid interview just mentioned the fact that he and Chris Pratt have been discussing getting some of the people involved with the MCU together to record a D&D &D type show like we see from Critical Role. I would be 100,000% down from this, especially if we got our well-known and beloved Matt GM here to actually head the project. Can we? Please? Maybe? No? But please? But yeah, I would certainly be okay with this. The MCU actors all seem to have great chemistry together, and I think there'd be, you know, literally millions of fans down to watch this and helping popularize D&D is something I'm totally about and would not begrudge them at all for doing. I don't kind of get the mentality some people have where they're like, no, D&D should stay in the nerd circles. Absolutely not. The bigger things like this become, the better in my opinion, because we get more entries, more ideas, more minds involved. No popularization of D&D can ever detract from the experience you have with your fun friend group who enjoys the game. All that's going to happen is the stigma around it goes away. So I like this, especially seeing people with the AAA status of Avengers level names coming in to possibly do something like this. This seems unlikely to happen. It was just kind of a speculation type thing. And Tom Holland saying that him and Chris Pratt are batting around the idea but I support it absolutely and completely. Anders Walter is set to adapt The Quest for the Time Bird as a TV series. Don't know anything about this one, but I wanted to include it because there definitely seems to be some fans for this one out there. So if you're one of these, let me know what the heck is happening here in the comments down below, because I'm confused. And let's transition now into the fantasy video game news because we have some interesting tidbits. First, some quickie news. It seems that Cyberpunk 2077 will launch on GeForce Now within its first day. So that means if you have GeForce Now, you will have access to Cyberpunk 2077 on its release, which I think is a big news for a lot of people. Cyberpunk 2077 seems to be the most anticipated video game of this year. Good news for that platform, though I'm probably still gonna go with Steam. Now, I wanna give a bit of a deep dive moment here for Amazon's upcoming MMORPG. Yes, that's right, if you have not heard of this, Amazon is working on a fantasy MMORPG called New World. I've heard whispers of this for a while, but have not paid much attention until this breakdown of all the news we've gotten so far was posted by Force Gaming in the Fantasy News channel. It's a wonderful breakdown. I highly suggest you check it out if you're interested in MMORPGs at all. But what I can say, from my perspective, Amazon seems to be attempting one of the most ambitious MMORPGs of all time. If all the claims they are making here are true in terms of features, this will be gigantic. This will be a heck of a challenger for some of even the biggest names in this space. And with Amazon's strategy of just all-out attempts at making waves in various kind of media uh, spaces, it would make sense for them to go this big, and with the amount of resources, I think they could do it. That being said, the video game industry is full of lies. Just go to Eddie Burback's recent video about all the lies that were said around the Xbox Kinect when it was released. We have a history of being deceived. I don't think that will be the case here, though. Something about my instincts say yes, upon release, I'm sure this will be buggy, as all games of this scale are. 
but I don't think we're being lied to. I actually have pretty high expectations and plan to try this upon launch. That's just my plan. Let me know yours in the comments down below. I highly recommend you check this out in terms of factions, people fighting evil armies and hordes, player versus player, player versus computer battles. It seems epic as hell. So I'm curious. And people who are more experienced in this space, I'm not the most experienced in the MMORPGs. Let me know why I could be right or wrong. Or are you looking forward to it? If you've been a WoW player for a long time, is this something you're really interested in? Because this one has my eye probably more than any other story I covered here today, aside from the Wheel of Time news. This one really captured me. But that is your fantasy news of the day. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you like to support what I do here. And have a good one, y'all. Peace.